Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. 20, you know I ain't leaving out this year without this. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. We're his representatives. God is making his appeal through us. Put your hand on your heart and say, God is making his appeal through me. I've been favored for such a time as this. For our time together, I want to briefly talk about God making his appeal through favor. God making his appeal through favor. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Holy Spirit and take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. If you've ever studied the book of Esther, you would ultimately find that it is a story, Brian, of God's providence. How God begins to operate behind the scenes, even when it doesn't seem, Kyrie, that he's working. How he makes ways out of no ways, Marcus, when it doesn't seem like there's a way out. How he makes provision, Sonia, for his people that he may be ultimately glorified in every situation. Esther's story is also about God's impeccable timing. And while things may appear to be one way on the surface, while things may appear to be unsuccessful, unproductive, and hopeless, that God is simply moving in his own time because he knows the beginning and the end of your situation. So whether you have an extra day, an extra week, an extra year, an extra month, God will say, hold off on that because you'll fare better if you wait just a little longer. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And ironically, David, when we look at the book of Esther, they never mention the name God. Yet God's people still find themselves experiencing his providential care through his outstretched hand and his mighty arm. Yet they never say the word God in the book of Esther sister Nina and we see all of this interwoven within the events that take place in this particular pericope when we look this is about a 10 chapter book here in chapter 1 I told you about the banquet that King Ahasuerus or Xerxes had for his wife he wanted to show his wife's beauty and because she refused to come out he removes her as queen in chapter two he sets out to find him a replacement he ends up coming along and he finds Esther it's not by happenstance Ladasia that she happened to be the most beautiful when it comes to God these things simply don't happen by chance God already knew what the plans would be, Deacon and Shalanda, to exterminate all the Jews. So he had to raise up someone to use a platform in order to relieve his people. So in chapter 2, she's found Sister Jenkins to be the new queen of Persia, a woman who's come out of poverty. They had just been released from Babylonian captivity less than 60 years ago, and now she is the new queen of Persia. Kind of reminds me of how God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Not many noble, not many wise. God wants to make it clear when he relieves you and bless you that it was not by power or by might, but it was by his spirit so you can't say it was because I'm so this or I'm so that that God has blessed me you know that because you're blessed it had to be God to do this thing if you've been in school any length of time and you know that you wasn't the sharpest pencil in the box help me Holy Ghost and you passed your classes brother Hines help me Holy Ghost and you went through the school I don't care if you went from C to shine and C you still got your degree help me Holy Ghost you know it wasn't you that got your degree God God is moving your hands while you take help me elder drew moving your hands to pick the right answers that you knew you would have failed if you had to use your brain to get the right it was simply God who was moving your hands to help you pass that class because you didn't have enough mental wherewithal to get through it it was simply God elder Watson that did it it wasn't nothing that you had done it wasn't your human intellect it wasn't your sagacity that did it it wasn't because you were so sharp and you was the smartest one in the class it was none of all. it was simply the power of God that got you through that degree it was simply the power of God that got you through that business venture it was simply the power of God that you paid off that house you ain't that smart you ain't even the best steward when it comes to finances it was simply the plan and the plot of God
God that allowed you to experience the blessings of God. So we get to chapter 3, which is about five years later, into Esther's queenship. Help me, Holy Ghost. We find Haman, who is planning to do a, a, a genocide against the Jewish people because Uncle Morty or Uncle Mordecai refused to bow down in his presence. So in chapter 4, we find this nationwide death sentence to kill all of the Jewish people. And the people began to cry out. No wonder they cried out. I mean, it was one thing that we went into slavery slavery at least we got to live but this time you ain't even talking about putting us into slavery you talking about killing all of us so yes they did they cried out to God in chapter 4 asking God to have mercy and so he goes and he steps to his niece Esther or better known as Hadassah and he said listen here niece, niece. I know you are in the royal palace and I know that you can't step to the king but you know what you gonna need to go and open your mouth because all of us about to die they gave this decree on April the 17th according to your scriptures and next March around this time all of us are going to be dead so we need you to muster up some courage to go and step before the king use your platform use your influence and help out God's people or do you think you're going to just sit in the royal palace and enjoy your grapes your pomegranates and your figs and your plums while we all die and they going to spare you don't you realize when they realize you are a Jew you gonna be gone just like us could it be that God has put you in position for such a time as this could it be that so in chapter 5 Esther sets her plans in motion to save her people as she approaches the king in chapter 6 the, the king wants to honor Mordecai for saving his life in chapter 2 so the king makes Haman honor Mordecai despite Haman's hatred for Mordecai let me tell you this again in chapter 6 the king wants to honor Mordecai for saving his life in chapter 2 it was all a part of God's plan God had to allow Mordecai to get wind of the plot to kill the king so that he can get favor and have mercy from King Xerxes. If he hadn't done it, he wouldn't have had that favor with the king. So the man he has a problem with, princess, Haman, the, the king goes to Haman, the one that have a problem with Mordecai, and say, hook Mordecai up. <laughs> Somebody shout, I serve a bad God. The man that's trying to kill him is the man that God says, I'm going to use you to go and bless him. So in chapter number seven, Queen Esther exposes Haman. So she finally, after three chapters later, decides, you know what, honey, let's have some pillow talk. I'm kind of having some problems here. You, you, you know your guy Haman? Well, Haman, uh, he's giving us a hard time. He's talking about killing all of the Jews and he's trapping to kill Mordecai, the man that just saved your life. Not, not the man that saved me. They're talking about killing him. The king don't know anything that's going on. So in chapter 8, what, what Xerxes does is he says, you know what? Haman, you had this plan to do all this to the Jews. We're going to put you on that same plot. The plan that you was using to kill the Jews, we're going to put you on the gallows and hang you instead. You got to be careful about plotting and planning against somebody. Because the ditch you dig could be the very ditch you fall into. You got to be careful not to make that digging too deep and too wide. Because that means an open grave for you. When you are plotting and planning against God's people, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue rising against you in judgment, it shall be condemned. The very plot that Haman had against Mordecai was the same way, Sonia, that Haman himself died on. So in chapter 8, where the king allows a new nationwide decree to save the Jews from extermination, he had put his signet ring on it. And when he put his signet ring, he can't take back what he already decreed. So he told him, I tell you what, if they come after y'all, y'all fight them back. Y'all better protect y'all selves. Don't let them just do what they want to do and y'all just fall back. Y'all y'all have my blessing to protect yourself. Now, I can't undo the decree to exterminate because I gave my word on it. 
but I will allow you to protect yourselves against your enemy. So this is all in this particular story here in the book of Esther. When we look at the book of Esther, so often we think that favor is about promotion, and it is. We think about favor being about pleasure, that God is going to do something for me unsurpassed by anything else that I've experienced, that God is going to give me a road to blessings that I'm not going to have to toil on. God is going to hook a sister up. God going to give me a little sup sup for my troubles. God going to make this year easy and great for me. God going to give me this. We seem to equate favor with pleasantries. We want God to do something for us. And the reality is that is a part of favor because God wants to bless you just like that. He said there's no good thing that I will withhold from you when you walk upright. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God said it is my desire to bless you. I want to make you smile. I want you to be up and not never beneath. I want you to be the lender and not the borrower. I want you to be the head and not the tail. I want all nations to call you blessed. So it is the divine will and plan of God to bless his people. But then there comes on the cusp of pleasantries where God not only blesses and gives you favor for pleasantries, but he gives it for a platform. On a very basic level, it's for pleasantries. And usually pleasantries are for us and us alone. I'm not worried about nobody else. It's me and my four and no more. I'm not concerning myself and getting in nobody's business. That's a very selfish perspective. But when God gives you greater influence and moves you from pleasantries to platform, it's usually about a greater sacrifice. It's not just you that's involved. There are other people that God needs to minister to, and he's depending on you, honey to use your platform of influence so that he can make his appeal through you. It's not enough that you got some new rims on your car. Don't nobody get blessed because your new rims on your car. Don't nobody got blessed because you painted your kitchen. Did nobody get blessed because you went on your family vacation? Yeah, all of that is favor, but that was you and your three. But God wants to bless you beyond you and your three. And God wants to make his appeal through you. And he wants to know, can I trust you with a national platform? Can I trust you with something greater than you able to navigate by yourself, princess? I remember Deacon and Shalanda sharing her testimony, how she was working for one of the greatest uh, advertisement ads here at, at, from coast to coast in the United States. Everybody knew about the pity saver. Hallelujah. And she was one of their greatest sales agents in dispersing ads to the point where she was great, great notoriety with her company. So much so that they didn't just give her pleasantries. You say, well, what pleasantries did she get? She got six figure digits. She was able to buy whatever she wanted to buy. Money was never an issue for her. She was always very generous because she had more than enough to give because she didn't have to know what to do with it, so she just gave it. That's pleasantries, but God needed her beyond pleasantries. He wanted to create a platform so that he can use her voice. I choose to believe Deacon Shalanda that that was possibly a warning for the penny saver because when she stepped on that platform, she says, I know that you all are here, hundreds of people sitting out in the audience for this nationwide little rally meeting to yay penny saver y'all doing real good keep up the good work and guess one of our speakers is going to be Miss Shalanda Burks one of our greatest sales and she's going to give you some bits and nuggets on how to sell so Deacon and Shalanda shaking like a leaf walking up to the platform she already know the challenge I've already enjoyed the pleasantries now I got this platform here and I see a sea of people People out there, all eyes on me in the words of Tupac. Everybody's looking at me. Everybody's watching to see what is it that I'm going to do and what am I going to say about the situation. And she steps there because I don't wish to say anything publicly. I'm just, I know God been good to me and that's my truth. But God says, no, you didn't got the pleasantries. Now it's time to utilize the platform. Step to the platform and make this decree. Speak on my behalf. Let me make my appeal through you. Deacon and Shalanda stepped to the platform. She looked out at the sea of hundreds of people, executives and presidents.
presidents and vice presidents over this company and they're all smiling like tell them Londy, tell them Londy. Working for Pity Saver is a worthwhile adventure and we can get you a lot of money. Yeah, I know that, but my message ain't that on the day. I want you all to know that I am enjoying the perks of Penny Saver, but let me submit to you, it was because my God has blessed me. Can God make his appeal through you? Can God make his appeal through you? She could have took the platform and then took the pleasantries and then abandoned the platform. But God is not going to give you favor if you just take the pleasantries and don't honor the platform. You cannot get the pleasantries and walk away from the platform. Could it be that God has favored you for such a time as this? I choose to believe, Deacon and Shalanda, that that was warning because the Bible says, Rob, that warning comes, Tracy, before destruction. I believe that God was trying to let whoever was at the helm of pity saver know, you know what? You better recognize that I'm your help. Don't sit and give all your credit to your VPs and all the creation when I'm the creator. And Deacon and Shalanda put them in remembrance that it was the hand of God that had blessed the pity saver. And yet they still turned their back and not many years, if any, would it ever on it they shut down God will give us a warning before destruction but the wonderful thing is she got the platform and she honored her God and allowed God to make his appeal through her favor I submit to you with every rise and promotion there is a promoter we know that God is the one where all blessings come. The word of God says, all things come of thee, O God. And of thine own have we given thee. Those were the famous words of David when they began to build Solomon's temple. He understood that it was time to give back to God. That God had blessed him tremendously. And because his hands were so bloody, he could not build God a temple. That God decided Jamed to use his son because he was a better fit. So that's why it was called Solomon's temple. The first temple erected to God. So when they got ready, Elder Dacia, to erect Solomon's temple, the Bible said David and all of the leaders gave great substance to the house of God so much so that it was unfathomable how much they had gained they were putting gold on everything and I'm not talking about no gold leaf I ain't talking about no gold spray I'm not talking about braids that look gold I'm talking about 14, 18 karat gold they're overlaying the ark of the covenant they're overlaying the floors they're overlaying the walls with gold in the house of God and they looked to David and said how are you able to give such as this and David says all things come from thee O God and of thine own have I given thee I'm simply God giving you what you gave to me we understand that when God blesses us he's simply giving us his stuff and we have the choice to either give it back to him and honor him with it or act like it's something we did on our own God is the promoter, Asia, in every situation. I know you thought because you had great favor with your supervisor, but I heard Pastor Chris say on this morning, the king's heart is in God's hands, and like the rivers of water, he turned in whatever direction he will. That supervisor don't like you like that, and the truth be told, they really don't like you. God just turned their heart for a minute to give you that promotion, and then after you got it, they realize, I don't even like you like that. How did that happen? Well, God will temporarily confuse your end enemies until he can get you your platform and he'll use them if he need to to bless you Nikki because they ain't nothing but a stepping stool for your promotion and to your next platform you don't need everybody to like you that's a word for somebody that's doing all this overtime for your supervisor thinking that they your royal hookup it ain't them baby you need to stop kissing all of that and start looking up to the hills from which come at your help because you can do all that and God can still turn their heart away from you you don't need to be liked by everybody. You just need the right person to like you. And that's the Lord on today. God has the power to change your life, your zip code, your future, your destiny in one second. He can change all of that just by doing that. You was living here, now you live here. You was right here at Esther. We just came out of Babylonian captivity. Now I'm the queen of Persia. God can change your zip code in one second if he wants to. It's nothing from God to raise you from where you are. One word from the Lord will change your entire life. 
Just like he changed Esther's. Everything in heaven, hallelujah, in the earth belongs to God. It obeys God. The winds obey. The waves obey. The trees obey. The birds obey. The ocean, the ground, everything obeys God. So when it comes to you, all God had to do is speak to it and it started moving in your favor. It started moving in your direction. It started leaning. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. In my direction. God will cause things to lean in your direction when he's trying to extend his favor to you. So next time you hear that, you ought to lean in. God, lean in my direction. In the name of Jesus, speak to the winds if you have to. Speak to the waves if you have to. Speak to the birds if you have to. Speak to the trees, the soup. Whatever you need to do, God, just lean in my direction. God spoke to King Ahasuerus, Deacon Ishalanda, in chapter 2 of the book of Esther. And his heart, his heart turned toward Esther because he would use Esther's position as queen to change the life and the history of the Jews during her reign. And just like Esther, all God has to do is nod his head and move you from poverty to prosperity. One nod from God and you will move from renting to owning. One nod from God and you will move from obscurity to notoriety. And if we believe this people of God, we ought to have peace of mind and knowing that our Heavenly Father can speak to things that we simply cannot speak to when you can't speak to something God can get through when you don't have no influence God does when you got resistance here God can move on that situation just like that so when we look at the backdrop of Esther's story we know it's nobody but God that favored and promoted Esther and Mordecai this story, as I previously states, takes place in about 483 B.C. That was over. They went into Babylonian captivity from 605 to about 596 B.C. So this is about 100 years later. They went in for 70 years. So there's some time that has elapsed. The Jews were relegated to Babylonian captivity because of their rebellion to God. They took the pleasantries and didn't honor the platform. So God raised up their Babylonian captors to serve as an instrument of discipline against his people. You would think they had learned their lesson after being in bondage for 400 years under Egyptian bondage. But nonetheless, they got in the promised land and shook their fists at God and they end up going back into captivity called Babylonian captivity for 70 years. So the Jews were relegated to Babylonian captivity because of their rebellion to God. And now God will use the Babylonians as an instrument to discipline his people. It's some 70 years after their captivity, hallelujah, that the Lord will set his people free in 538. He would use the Medes and the Persians. He would use a heathen king to go and annihilate the Babylonians in order to set the Jews free. So King Cyrus the Great was the king at this time of the Mede and Persian Empire. He ends up overtaking the Babylonians, setting God's people free and allowing those that desire if they wanted to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. He served his purpose. He wasn't even a child of God, but he used his platform to honor God to release his people to go back and build Jerusalem. We are here now in this particular chapter for a little Jewish girl whose people had come out of captivity 50 years earlier to be chosen not as king of Israel, a queen of, she's not the queen of Israel. She's not even the queen of Babylon. She's not the queen of the United States. This is the queen of the ancient world. Her story, Minister Demetrius, is very similar to that of Joseph. I'm going to take my seat after this because I know you only can choose so much of this. You remember Joseph who was raised from obscurity to notoriety? God gave him a platform. He went about, he got, y'all know he got the favor because it was a coat of many colors. And he got his coat because his father favored him. And he not only had the favor, but he had a physical cold. Hallelujah. So you just come up here. Keep walking this way, Sonia. Keep walking this way. Come on. Y'all look at this coat of many colors right here. Come on and do your coat. Do your twirl, baby. Do your twirl. Hallelujah. That's the coat. Hallelujah. The coat of favor. The coat of many colors. Yes. That's it. That's favor right there. 
Joseph got one of those. Y'all give her a hand for showing her coat. She got a coat. I mean, he didn't even know I was preaching on this today. Hallelujah. She got a, he, he, he had a coat of many colors. And because he had this coat, his brothers hated him because of the favor. And because they hated him, they threw him in the pit. And then they sold him into slavery. He gets out of the pit and gets a position working for Potiphar, which is the king's right-hand man. How do you get out of the pit from being a right-hand man? Somebody shout, that's favor. When you can explain it, it ain't favor. But when it just simply doesn't make sense, you don't know how you got it. You don't know how you landed there. All you know is you looked up and you was blessed. You got the Holy Ghost hook up. You finally escaped the thing that had its clutches on you. All you can say is, God, it was you and you alone that blessed me just like that. This story is so similar to that of Joseph because Joseph was tasked with saving his people from famine. There was a major drought. Y'all remember us telling the story? There was a major drought and there was no food in the land. And the brothers that hated Joseph had to step to Joseph and ask him for food. They needed his favor. They needed his mercy in order to live. He could have used his platform and said, I don't have nothing for y'all. Y'all remember how you treated me? How you threw me in the pit? How you ripped my coat up? How you miss just did me dirty? Now I don't have nothing for y'all. You, I want to say this to you when you get a platform you can't abuse your power when you get a platform you cannot abuse your power because Joseph could have abused his power he could have said I don't have to give you anything but it was not for that position though God gave him a platform because he knew the famine was coming and he needed somebody in position who will honor him that God can make his appeal through I want to say to you in this season, God is enlarging territories for the purpose of spreading the unadulterated gospel. God is opening and enlarging territories. God is extending favor. God is raising up platforms for those he can trust with the word of God in their mouths. If you don't use the platform, I got to ask you, what do you need favor for? If you're not going to use the platform, I want you to have a sila moment and ask yourself, why do I need favor? Because if it's just about the pleasantries, then you're not ready for favor. Because God don't need to give you a platform to get you some pleasantries. He'll get you the pleasantries and the platform, but he just want to be able to make his appeal through you to pull the lost and dying world back to him. But will you get the platform and don't honor it? Will you abuse your power when you get there? You got to ask yourself, why do I want favor? As we're transitioning into 23 and God is telling us to conform to his image, that God wants us to uh, accelerate our divine nature. You, I want you to have a Selah moment and ask yourself, why do I need favor? Because if God gave me a platform, can he trust me with it, Nikki? If God gave you a platform, can he trust you? Esther, I know you sitting in a lap of luxury. I know you like all your maidens sitting and give you pedicures every day of the week. I know you are enjoying them scratching your head and brushing your hair and all of that. I know you like your fingernails being polished. I know you like the daily massages you're getting and eating all the delicacies. And all of that is pleasantry. But you need this platform to step to Xerxes and let him know there's a bigger cause than you just being comfortable. Oh! It's a bigger cause than you just being comfortable. It's a bigger cause than you just having you a little sub something. Can God trust you with a greater platform so that he can make his appeal through you? When was the last time you got a platform? And did you honor God when you had it? 
I want you to really think about this because I'm letting you know now prophetically that God is raising up a lot of platforms in this season because the time is far spent. The day is at hand. The Bible says cast off the works of darkness and put on the arm of light. Walk honest as in the day, not in drunkenness, reveling in strife, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh. You got to understand God needs to make his appeal through us because time is drawing short. God is not willing that any would perish but that all would come to repentance how long does he have to wait before we get it right with him and if we're supposed to be his ambassadors help me in his place media good job media we are his ambassadors and yet we have a platform and God can't even make his appeal through us how are we an, amb an ambassador a representative how are we his representatives and he's giving you a platform and yet you've made no appeal on behalf of the kingdom? How many people have you witnessed to since you got God's favor? You're the new supervisor, but you don't want to risk being demoted so you just keep your lips sealed. You the new this or the new that or you the new professor or you the new whatever you've been applying for and God has extended favor in your direction. But because you don't want to compromise your position, where well, they said we can't, a convenient out. They said we can't talk about God around here. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to be disobedient and, and rebellious and I don't want to circumvent the system. I don't want to be accused of being insubordinate right now. Oh, that's a convenient excuse. You talk about what anything else you want to talk about. God gave you that platform to allow you to make an appeal on behalf of the kingdom of God. I got to ask you, what do you need favor for? Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.